I want to deal with the issue of discouragement because uh, God cannot use a discouraged person. When you are discouraged, you miscarry. Anytime you get discouraged, you miscarry. And everybody is carrying something in life. Uh, I'm carrying a heavy cargo in me. Mm. See, I'm carrying a heavy cargo, a heavy cargo. And therefore, I, can mis I cannot be miscarried. I cannot. See, I cannot be discouraged. I cannot be discouraged. Say it. I cannot. Say, I cannot be discouraged. Because whenever I am discouraged, I miscarry my cargo. You cannot be discouraged. I'm telling you. And hear me. Discouragement is the trusted weapon of Satan. And is the last weapon Satan deploys against you before you enter your promised land. And so many people have missed it in life because of discouragement. And many things can make you in life, many things can hit you that will cause you to be heavily discouraged. And you wish to give up on life. And I've been there several times in the past 35 years of preaching. I've been in places and I've been in seasons and moments of my life that I wanted to quit. And I wanted to give up. And just after that moment of discouragement was the greatest triumph of my life. And the greatest breakthrough of my life. Are you hearing me somebody? You can't afford to be discouraged because discouragement is a luxury you can't afford. Discouragement is dangerous because discouragement attracts a suicidal spirit. Discouragement attracts a suicidal spirit. Anytime you see a man or a woman discouraged, the next thing they do is to quit on life or to give up on their harvest. The Bible says if you faint not, you shall reap to be discouraged means you have fainted and it also means that you have resigned and it also means that you sign your dead warrant and giving satan permission or authorization to eliminate you before your time discouragement is a deadly trusted wicked weapon of the devil And it doesn't matter how strong you are. It's a weapon and it's a spirit that when it hits you, you don't think as you ought to think. And you don't speak as you ought to speak. Because a discouraged person says something like this. I'll show you in the Bible. I wish I died. You don't wish to die. And you must never wish to die. Because you don't understand this. Death wants you already. So to wish something that wants you already means you are inviting it and you are giving it authorization or permission to take you. You have to be careful when you are discouraged what you say. Because anytime you are discouraged, when you open your mouth, remember that you are on trial because words are vehicles words are carriers words are tools and are weapons that will be deployed against you so whenever you discourage please be careful of what you say because discouragement attracts a suicidal spirit And you can commit suicide by what you say your own words look at proverbs 6 and 2 proverbs 6 and 2 by your words thou art snared snared by your words you are taken by your own words 
it is the things you say ni bi no you or no ko na bu yo en se ma ho de wanu ka no enu ne ma tan fu nu nya ho kwan ni bi no you or ko na bu ni ha abon sangbe ni na o higbe You have to be careful and i'll show you in the bible a high priest who had believed god for a miracle for years to an old age his dreams was at hand and it was almost there and just when his dreams was almost there discouragement had taken him over that he doubted the voice of elohim and doubted the word of the angel of the lord and god said zacharias because you are discouraged you will compromise your destiny and sabotage your own the destiny of your son that is in the womb of your wife so you will be dumb until your son is born you will not be able to speak i am putting a perpetual padlock i'm putting a restraining order i will mute you mute you won't be able to speak i will put a guard order on your mouth that you will not be able to utter a word because if i don't put a guard order on your mouth and restrain you from speaking and allow you the freedom to speak the way you are talking right now you will kill your own child you will abort your own miracle you will miscarry that heavy cargo you are carrying by your own words and in order for you not to destroy your own miracle i will mute you and put a gag order on your mouth and you will not be able to speak until the child is born be careful what you say when you are discouraged i've heard parents say i wish this child died and they and yet you don't mean it you don't mean it so if you don't mean it why are you saying it never say what you don't mean because what you say can be used against you that's why in america when the police arrests you the first thing they read your rights to you and warn you to be careful what you say because anything you say can be used against you All truth is parallel the Bible says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge ignorance of the truth is no excuse you cannot say because I don't know I've just said it and I was upset so I spoke no the Bible said that you are you are accountable for your words you just can't speak because words are vehicles somebody say words are vehicles they are vehicles they are vehicles they carry a message and the way satan gets at you and i is by words let's begin our journey quickly let's look at certain characters in the bible and and study certain characters and see how they dealt with discouragement first genesis the 18th chapter reading from the 12th to the 15th verse talking about sarah the wife of abraham the wife of god's friend therefore sarah laughed within herself saying after i am once old shall i have pleasure my lord being old also and the lord said unto abraham wherefore did sarah laugh saying shall i of a surety bear a child which i'm old is anything too hard for the lord at the time appointed i will return unto thee according to the time of life and sarah shall have a son then sarah denied saying i laughed not for she was afraid and he said nay but thou didst laugh hear me god promised abraham a seed and his wife they believed for 24 years god's promise a year before the promise came to pass god came to town and there was a divine visitation and God visited Abraham just a year before the promise came to pass to prepare him that this thing that you have waited 24 years for is going to happen the next year 
and ladies and gentlemen just a year she waited 24 years and just the year before the promise came to pass she was so discouraged that she started mocking God in her heart that word she laughed in her heart was mockery she was mocking God she was questioning the integrity of Elohim she doubted the prophetic word she doubted her own prophecy and God said why did you laugh in your heart is there anything too hard for God now you got to understand ladies and gentlemen that God operates according to times and seasons everybody say times and seasons and please hear me there are things I am walking in today there are certain blessings I enjoy today and certain exposures I have today that if God had given it to me 10 years ago or 20 years ago I wouldn't have been ready for it I'm telling you I would have destroyed myself some of the exposures I have some of the access I have today and some of the places I walk in the corridors of power in the nations of the world if I have been exposed 20 years ago I would have been destroyed in the process because I wasn't matured I hadn't come of age I hadn't yet gone through the mail and I hadn't you see if you get something you haven't worked for or you didn't earn it you misbehave and you mishandle it there are things i have today and i'm blessed by i don't even talk about it and it doesn't mean anything to me because success is not what you have today and success is not where you are or how much you have in the bank account success is how you end the race success is how you finish because there are people who began well and they didn't finish well and there are people who were loaded and they were moguls in their lifetime and they died broke by the time they were leaving this world they were broke so where you are today don't impress me Nelson Mandela said something and I quote he said don't judge me by my success as you defined it nor judge me by where I am today but Nelson Mandela said judge me by the many times I fell and I got up again Sarah had one year for her promise and she almost missed it but for the relationship the husband had with God as a friend of God and as a skillful intercessor who could come between the porch and the altars to intercede for her the promise would have been aborted because she was so discouraged that she had to miscarry discouragement the trusted weapon of Satan the weapon he deploys I told you years ago when I live in America I was going through a difficult time in my family life I was invited by Bishop T.D. Jakes to dedicate the Potter's house and it was the height of my ministry thousands live on CNN vice president of the United States was in the meeting and by the time I finished praying and dedicating the building it was mind-blowing I remember I put that prayer on national television years ago and former president Rawlings called me and said that was very powerful prayer you prayed and after that prayer after that very prayer I prayed in the peak of all that I was so discouraged by a rejection I faced from some people that I went into my hotel room and I stood at the 14th floor of my hotel in Texas in Dallas and I wanted to jump out my hotel I'll show it to you in the Bible how you can rise so high and come so low and the times where discouragement most hits you is when you are in your element the most because the same level you rise to is the same level you come down when you see plane take off it takes off with power 
water and when he's landing he comes with a force what goes up comes down and as I stood by the window and I was contemplating all kinds of things in my mind and I was thinking about my kids and what everybody would say happened to me and everything I just at that time everything came to a standstill and I really didn't care and I said what is happening to me how come I don't care anymore why do I have to throw everything away and suddenly my phone rang it was one of my sons he said bishop jakes wants to see you he sent a car for you right now meet the car at the lobby and i changed and i went down and we met and he said i want you to speak for me at woman thou at lose and manpower and i need you to hold some meetings in my church for me i was broke i didn't have money things were bad and i saw these guys that i trained that i brought up and they were right there at the high table and when i walk in there security told me that my name wasn't on the list so i'm not invited and i have to leave and when i got to my hotel i was so discouraged and i said you know what discouragement will kill your hope and when you kill your hope you don't have a reason for living because hope is what keeps maintains your future there was a time i faced so much misrepresentation in this country brought me to a place of such a deep discouragement that I didn't want to stay in this country anymore. I lived in America for eight years. I didn't want to have anything to do with Ghana. I didn't care. And I didn't want to go to where Ghanaians were. And I won't go to any Ghanaian church. When a Ghanaian church invites me, I don't go. And I, don't, I didn't want to deal with Ghanaians. I didn't want my own people around me. I was so discouraged. And I believed that our people, the enemy of the Ghanaian is, is the brother, the Ghanaian. We have self-hatred. We hate ourselves. This thing we call hospitality is about celebrating strangers. We don't celebrate our own. We will celebrate strangers, foreigners, but not our own. We will sell properties to a stranger and to a foreigner instead of selling it to our own brother the Ghanaian and God dealt with me after eight years just when I become big in America he said pack your things go back to the land of your negativity 2008 he said your nation needs you go back and he said I'll hold you responsible for what happens if you don't go back I said, okay, you don't have to convince me. You got me already. That's how I came back. Let's look at another character, Zacharias. Zacharias, Luke chapter 1, 18 to 20. Luke chapter 1, 18 to 20. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. You see, discouragement always causes you to see things from the natural point of view. It blinds you to the truth. It blinds you to reality. It always causes you to see the negative side of life. Go ahead. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, thus stand in the presence of God. He said, if you doubt me, let me help you to appreciate who you're talking to. I am Gabriel, the minister of information. I stand in the presence of Elohim. And nothing is done on earth by the decisions of eternity without me announcing it and i have come to announce the judicial determination of eternity that it is an executive decision and it is irrevocable and it is not negotiable that your wife that is called barren is going to be pregnant whether you believe it or not 
he said and, and i'm sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings he said i have good news for you you see when people are discouraged they don't even believe good news i'm telling you when you are discouraged eh, you can get to a point where you don't want to be comforted you don't want to believe the truth you don't want to hear any good things you rather you rather get comfort by hearing more bad things i'm telling you you are programmed to hear more bad things as soon as somebody can say okay what are they saying what is it? what are they saying what is it now you are open to bad things than good things that's what discouragement does if you faint not you shall reap so it means when you faint you abort your harvest and you only faint when it is harvest time satan hits you hear me there is evil in this world don't be fooled if there is no evil jesus wouldn't have taught us to pray and he's one of the things he taught us to pray he said lead us not into temptation there are temptations in this life if you don't know i'm telling you there are temptations in this life and then one of the things he said we should pray of he said he said deliver us from evil there is evil in this world 153 people crashed in nigeria last week one young man i knew him i had dinner with him a few weeks ago in london four children little kids mother-in-law two and wife and two house help all of them died wiped everybody out and you call that a mistake or a technical fault you call that an error no that is not error that is the demonstration and the power of evil don't be fooled don't talk to me about philosophy and logic you want to talk about philosophy and logic then bring back that man and his children and the mother-in-law and the wife bring them back to life then let's talk you can't convince me that is nothing but evil and that's why we must command deliverance from evil say i command my deliverance from evil in the name of jesus there is evil in this world don't be fooled and let me tell you evil is never satisfied till it destroys good the purpose of evil is to destroy good and evil will always sense good and will always attack good go ahead he said and behold thou shalt be damned and not able to speak until the day thou that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season you see the angel said i'll put a gag order on your mouth you because if i don't put a gag order on your mouth and restrain you and take away your ability to speak you will abort your own assignment and sometimes God creates circumstances and situations to pull us back from everybody so that we can learn to be quiet because sometimes we talk too much I was telling them at the second service that I was dealing with a guy in America recently a bishop and he literally naked his life and was telling me everything about his life and I was almost tempted to reveal some iniquities of my bloodline. Then the Holy Ghost said, Careful! Don't uncover yourself. He said, Set up. Immediately, I bought him my jacket. <laughs> you have to be careful who you naked yourself to and who you tell your secrets. Because your best friend today can become your worst enemy tomorrow. I'm telling you and the Lord said son he doesn't have the capacity to handle where you are coming from he doesn't 
sometimes people can tell you their story and they can tell you their pain only to get you to reveal yours so he talked and talked and talked and when he finished i said that is very good i'll be praying for you me i have no secrets i don't have anything to tell so it's not everything you talk about and the angel said you zacharias you are too close to a miracle if i don't mute you put a gag order on your mouth you will go talking about what you have heard and you will compromise the destiny of your own son you will kill your own child so you will be dumb until the child is born jericho they got to jericho and god said go around the walls of jericho what do we say nothing and people were looking at them every day they, they went around the wall saying nothing can you imagine how they looked in the eyes of the people what is what is wrong with these people what is it about them just going around the wall if god had told them the master plan they would announce it they would have announced it and the people would have attacked them before the sixth day and the seventh day so god said i'm not going to give you the detail and i'm not going to tell you everything i just need you to be quiet and just follow instructions the reason why women carry children and they lose them and they miscarry sometimes they have to even stitch their wombs and tell them to lay in bed the rest of the pregnancy and if you don't follow the instructions of the doctor and you said well i want to be cute when i finish having my baby want to be cute you want to be cute okay so you won't lie there and follow instructions you will lose that child and a lot of you spiritually you miscarry every now and then because you don't follow instructions sometimes i do things without telling my wife and it's not because i don't love her because the bible said dwell with them according to knowledge and i know her level of knowledge and understanding and i understand that women are 90 percent emotional and 10 percent intuitive to reasoning and men are 90 percent logical that's why when men come to church if you see a man prophesying in church he has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights a woman doesn't need to fast and pray to prophesy let the atmosphere just be good she's in the spirit right now hear me after service eh, a prophet or a man of god can be standing and the lady will come and engage him and the lady is interested in him and is leading him on and he can't even sense it but the wife is standing there and the wife has what we call intuition so the wife feels it but the man is thinking it but she feels it and can tell that this woman is on assignment and she knows that if she says anything the man will say she's jealous so she won't talk because women have many ways of speaking they have eye language body language mood language so the woman will be standing and this lady is talking talking doing her stuff and then selling the woman the wife will switch and put up an attitude and the, the other woman will catch it and say okay pastor bye bye and then the husband will say what did you do to her and he will say nothing let's go home the man has no clue he has no clue but it's in the spirit 
Now, even though women are emotional, it is biologically proven that they think with two sides of their brains, wise men think with one side of their brains. That's why men lie more than women. Women lie, but they remember everything they say so they can keep to it. But men forget, so they keep being caught. Have you realized that a woman can be cooking in the kitchen? He's talking on the phone. He's taking care of the children. He's watching television. And he's fine. She's in charge. Doesn't mean anything. And the man is watching football. And the children are fighting. He can't hear. He cannot hear. And he can't concentrate. So he has to scream on the children to be quiet because he needs to concentrate on the football. Why? He's thinking with one side of his brain. Okay, let me leave that. Let me move on. Let's look at John the Baptist. Let's examine. Let's look at John the Baptist. Luke chapter 7, 18 to 23. John the Baptist. And let's see how he dealt with discouragement. And discouragement also brings offenses. Offenses. When and people the disciples get of John showed him of all these things. Uh -huh. And John calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus saying, Have thou he that should come? Or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Are thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to the poor the gospel is preached and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me you see that is what happens when you are discouraged you got offended you become offended when you are discouraged you become offended now realize that john the baptist before jesus ever had disciples it was john the baptist that introduced his disciples to jesus to follow jesus Number two, it was John the Baptist who announced Jesus to the world. He said, Behold the Lamb who takes away the sin of this world. Not the sins. It wasn't plural, but it was singular. What is the sin of this world? Rebellion against God. And he said, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sin of this world. And he said, He who sent me told me that he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He was very clear about who Jesus was. But because he was discouraged that he was in prison, Jesus didn't come to visit him. Jesus was out there working the works of God and had ignored him. He was discouraged and in the state of discouragement, offense set in and he began to question the mandate and the assignment of Jesus and doubted the voice of God. It is dangerous to doubt the voice you know. hear me whenever you are discouraged the next thing apart from miscarrying is transition transition you begin to get ready to leave the earth the choices and the decisions you make will leave you will take you out of here john the baptist had to be taken off the scene because he had become a tool and an instrument and a vehicle to plant doubt about the assignment of the messiah and his assignment was so important to god and to heaven that god like the american will say i'm going to have it i'm not going to have it i'm not going to have this so john have to be removed of the scene not to spread doubt about the messiah's mission it is dangerous to go around spreading doubt about the assignment of others 
I'm telling you. And John the Baptist's head was taken, cut off. And when his blood was shed, being the last prophet of the Old Testament, when John the Baptist's blood was shed, that sealed the Old Testament. And remember that he was a cousin of Jesus. And when the blood of Jesus was shed, it opened up the New Testament. And understand this. When the angel came to Mary about the birth of Christ, he said to Mary that your cousin Elizabeth is six months pregnant which means that she's more pregnant than you so whenever you have issues go to her because she's more pregnant than you and apart from the fact that she's more pregnant than you what she's carrying relates to what you are carrying the john the baptist in her womb relates to the assignment and the destinies of both relates you got to be careful who you marry just because a sister looks good and she's a shandamite and a shidamite and she talks in tongues and she's blood washed and water baptized don't mean you are to marry her and just because the brother looks cute and he's on fire and he talks in some powerful and heavy tongues that does not mean you should marry him you have to be sure that where he is going and where you are going doesn't conflict because if what he's carrying and what you are carrying is in conflict you can say what God has put together let no man put us on that and the thing will stay together because what keeps us together is not love it's purpose it's assignment my purpose is powerful because purpose is the reason for which i live pursuit reveals my passion and my passion is a proof of my assignment and my assignment is the reason for which i live are you still with me let's look at another character john the baptist had to leave the scene because when you are discouraged you question the truth you question everything you know you doubt even yourself and it's dangerous let's look at another character in the bible quickly come with me to gideon gideon acts gideon judges chapter 6 judges chapter 6 from verse 12 to 15 quickly Judges 6 from verse 12 And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him uh -huh. The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor The, word, the Lord is with thee I'm go The Bible said when thou walkest through the fire I'll be with you When thou walkest through the waters And through the rivers I'll be there And he said though I walk through the valley Of the shadow of death For I shall have fear of nothing because thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comforted me so he was discouraged he was down he was sitting under a tree had given up on life but the lord was with him and he was a mighty man of valor so when i'm down and when i'm discouraged and when i'm lonely and all by myself when i am married but i'm still lonely when i'm not married but i'm still lonely when i'm surrounded by people and i'm still lonely is the lord still with me and am i still a mighty man or woman of valor yes you can be in the worst place of life and still have the lord on your side are you hearing me somebody shout yes Go ahead. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this before he's us? He's questioning, he's questioning. He's questioning the integrity of God and the presence of God. That if God be with us, why all of this? How can I be in the good books of God? How can the Lord be with me? And yet, subjected to all of this public ridicule, 
how can the Lord be with me and I suffer stigmatization betrayals and scandalization and yet the Lord is with me how can he be with me and allow me to go through all of this yes the Lord is with you but you got to go through the mail the Lord is with you but you got to go through the process the Lord is with you but you got to be tested like I've always said I don't trust any man or woman who hasn't been tested and tried you cannot be trusted if you haven't been tested and tried you are dangerous until you are tested and until you've been tried I won't allow you into my tent because in my tent is the place of my vulnerability when I'm inside of my tent I listen to my cool music and I don't want you to come and hear my music in my tent give me a break leave me alone in my tent that's why I am in my tent not in your tent busybody are you with me okay so that was Gideon a mighty man of valor you know what he was saying he said my family is the poorest in Manasseh and the poor call us poor and I am the least among all of my brethren when you get discouraged you always look at the negative sides of life you become a pessimist instead of being an optimist you always look at the negative things in life you always look at the bad things happening to you in life you never see the good side of life you're always looking at the bad side of life and you disqualify yourself when you are discouraged even when god qualifies you you will disqualify yourself because you are discouraged betrayal can cause you to be discouraged david was so discouraged in the time of his life he said if he said i wish i have a wind like a dove and i will fly away and rest somewhere from everybody else look at this come with me before we get to david come with me to first kings 19 and 4 first kings the 19th chapter and the fourth verse show you some few things quickly but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree you see that's what discouragement does it makes you sit down that way sit down means you resign you retire there is no retirement in anointing and in callings in the giftings of god whenever you see people sit down means they've retired and that's why i said there is no difference between the dream of the old man and the vision of the young man that the vision of the young man is in the dream of the old man and unless you have the old man to fulfill his dream your vision will never be realized and a true son's vision is to fulfill the dream of his father not to create his own dream or his own vision solomon's vision was to fulfill his father's dream and his father's dream was to build a house for god and that was solomon's vision to build the dream of his father joseph was a young man and none of them ever had a dream until his father put his coat of many colors upon joseph and the coat of many colors represent the mantle of the father when the old man put his coat and his mantle on joseph it accelerated joseph's age moving from minimum to maximum unction and anointing and joseph began to dream through the dream of the old man and saw the vision of his future in the dream of his old man I stand here today and for all that I am and I will ever be I give credit to the fathers who raised me up because it is on their shoulders I stand to see the promised land it is on their shoulders I stand to have advanced knowledge and to see the outcomes of the future 
it's on their shoulders i stand and i see through their eyes now here was elijah he had called fire from heaven slain 400 prophets of baal in the peak of his success jezebel sent the word to him that will do unto you like you did to the prophets of baal and the man forgot that he had power to call fire from heaven and suddenly he became so discouraged that he said i won't have it anymore i want to die you don't have to invite the spirit of death it wants you already he said god let me die take me out of here i'm tired that told me my breath get me out of here and god said okay you are in a transition time get elisha to take over from you and that was the end of elijah's ministry that was it he never performed one miracle that was it he was so discouraged that he committed suicide and remember that discouragement attracts suicidal spirits and discouragement will cause you to miscarry and god can use discouraged people it's a very strong word but that is the truth elijah the guy that caught fire from heaven couldn't deal with discouragement and died Ahitophel, the man that the bible said was david counselor and the bible said Ahitophel was full of the counsel of god that when you heard Ahitophel, ladies and gentlemen it was like you have heard the oracles of elohim and Ahitophel was so discouraged because his counsel was defeated and in the mix of the discouragement the bible said he went home set his house in order and hanged himself people hang themselves take over those and die kill themselves why because they can't handle shame they can't deal with stigma betrayals because it causes discouragement it's a bad spirit and it's a bad weapon and i declare vengeance on the spirit of discouragement i declare divine judgment on the spirit of discouragement and i command it to lose you now in the name of jesus say amen let's look at something here let's look at let's look at see david look at david in psalm 55 12 to 14. psalm 55 12 to 14 look at something psalm 55 okay. verse 12 to the 14 verse is it for it was not an enemy that reproached he me. said it wasn't an enemy that made mockery of me then i could have borne it then i could have handled it neither was it he that hated me he said it wasn't one that hated me that an outsider man, that did magnify himself against me then i would have hid myself from him then i could have also understood it but it was thou a he man my equal he said it was thou a man my equal my guide my guide my counselor you and guided me you were once upon a time my counselor and my acquaintance my acquaintance we took sweet counsel together we took sweet counsels together and walked together unto and the together house of god. we walked to the house of god to fellowship we took communion together we sat together in the church had the word of god together you were my, a man my equal my acquaintance my guide a friend a bosom brother i stood naked before you and you stood naked before me and yet you stabbed me at the back and you betrayed me and david said i wish i was like a dove have the wings of a dove i will fly away to rest discouragement look at one one more thing look at david again how you deal with discouragement look at it come with me to first samuel 13 4 to 8 first samuel 30 first samuel the 30th chapter the fourth to the eighth verse then david and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept 
until they had no more power to weep you can cry till you have no more power to cry that's what discouragement does and cry. david's two wives were taken captives mm -hmm. ahinoam the jezreelites and abigail the wife of nebal the Camelite. now 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 don't don't quote me scripture here and say david had two wives <clears throat> that was his dispensation we live in a different dispensation that's all i'll say here don't want to go into doctrines but i just want to correct that because i can see immediately he said david's two wives somebody say yes sir <laughs> permission to strike hallelujah let's move on and david was greatly distressed mm -hmm. for the people spake of stoning him mm -hmm. because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters but david encouraged himself in the lord you see that is the key God. there this where david has lost wives and children like everybody else and these were mighty men david walked with and he raised and trained went to battles with them they fought together they ate together slept together defended each other gave each other fire cover and here they had all lost their families and none of them including david wasn't there when the enemy came and captured their families and burnt the whole city down and out of their discouragement and their pain they turned on david and they wanted to kill david and sacrifice him and david was so discouraged that he had nobody speaking for him and the bible said and david encouraged himself in the lord is god you got to learn how to talk to yourself when there is nobody to talk to you you gotta learn how to talk to yourself you gotta learn how to say to yourself the bible said the woman that was suffering from an issue of blood said to him to herself if i can but touch the hem of his garment i shall be made whole she didn't tell anybody the bible says she said within herself you gotta learn how to talk to yourself you gotta learn how to say within yourself because a time comes in the life that you are all alone and you are all by yourself and nobody understands you your wife don't understand you your husband don't understand you your children don't understand you your friends don't understand you and you are all alone and you gotta learn how to speak to yourself is everybody hearing me shout yes and the bible says the bible says my enemy rejoice not over me micah for when i fall i shall rise again the bible says the righteous man falleth seven times and seven times he rises up again say yes listen listen to some quote of Nelson Mandela he said don't judge me by my success or by where I am now but judge me by the many times I have fallen and I got up again Nelson Mandela another quote from Nelson Mandela the greatest glory in life is not the proof or the sign that you haven't fallen before but the greatest sign of greatness in life is the fact that you have fallen but anytime you fall you rise up again he said the greatest glory in life is not that you you haven't fallen before but it's the fact that anytime you fall you rise up again tell somebody rise up again are you hearing me he said another quote from Nancy Mandela he said courage or a courageous man is not one that doesn't feel fear but one who conquers fear it's not that i don't have fear or i don't feel fear i feel fear i sense fear i see fear 
but I conquer my fear. Are you hearing me, somebody? It is said that courage, courage is not the absence of fear, but it is the capacity to take action despise the fears in order that you may have a good outcome in life are you hearing me somebody he said the greatest glory in life is not the fact that you you haven't fallen before but it is the capacity of rising up anytime you fall that is a sign of greatness and i say my quote that one of the greatest signs in life is not the fact that you haven't fallen but it's the fact that when you fall don't stay there rise up again because everybody know you have fallen so don't stay there rise up again president Nich richard nixon said a man is not finished when he fails but a man is finished when he quits sir winston churchill said the other day he said one of the true signs of success and greatness in the life of an individual is this that one moves from failure to failure and still maintains confidence in the mix of it all are you hearing me somebody somebody shout yes i don't know where you are today i don't know where you're going through but i came to tell you your latter will be greater than your past say yes I don't know what you're going through right now but to everything there is an end and everything that has a beginning has an end say yes I don't know what you're going through but I came to tell you that everything has an expiry date say yes I don't know what you're going through but the Bible said weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning say yes Yes. I don't know what you're going through right now but I came to tell you that your comeback will be greater than your setback say yes 